Hi, Chris Stellan of Home Team Game Dev, and today we're going to talk about who you can learn the most from. And I mean you here in the royal sense of you, as in nearly ever in the world, is throughout your entire life, going to probably learn the most from this person, or more correctly, these people. You have the most access to them, fortunately, but you have to know to look for it, and you have to make sure you're not missing the importance of how this works. So occasionally when we're starting out, we want to study the masters, the experts, the top of our field. If we want to be a public speaker, we watch Steve Jobs. If you want to be a writer, we look at, oh, what did Kurt Vonnegut write about? How to be a good writer? And while they, as a person who has experience in that field, probably have some useful thoughts to share, quite often the kinds of errors that they are focused on, the kinds of level of detail and decision and direction that they're dealing with are a ways away from where we're at when we're starting out. The same thing happens when we're in the creative writing space and we again look at Hollywood films as a point of discussion. Now they can be useful as a canonical source of central sort of shared canon. Same way in the game design space that we can refer to elements that you and I are likely to both recognize because we've played some of the same games. But ultimately, what's going to help you refine your craft the most is looking for the errors in peers who are around your level. Seeing how someone else who is around your experience level writes code as well how they're making models for games, how they're designing levels. And the reason why this is so important is because once again, if you're looking at a AAA game where someone has spent their entire career and many years of training and many years of shipped titles, getting to the level of craft that they're at for what they're doing, there are so many problems you will not even ever see because they squelched that problem many years ago. They just take for granted. We just take for granted. We don't even see that that is an issue that they don't make anymore, but we might still make. But at the same time, it's incredibly difficult to see errors in our own work. When someone else makes the kind of errors that we make as well, oh, it's irritating to us. We almost want to be in denial about it. It almost makes us more angry, more frustrated, more annoyed when we see them in their slides presentation, when we hear them and how they give speeches, when we see the work that they've done, level design and game arts, kind of code that they write, it helps us see the kind of mistakes we would make. This is also why, not coincidentally, Home Team Game Dev is structured the way that it is so that people are building projects together. It's not just about being a more accessible way to share access to my time as a trainer, although I think that's hopefully useful to them as people who I consistently get a lot of experience working with people at beginning and intermediate level. It's also because so much of the learning happens from seeing one another's work. It's from observing somebody else's code who's still at a similar experience level, plus or minus some years, maybe a different background, but a similar amount of background, or maybe coming from a different core skill set. If we see it in our own, we don't see it at all. We just glaze right over it. Only when we see it in someone else's around our level, do we really I say it just gets at us, irritates us. And that's usually a sign that we have something there to learn about how we do things. And or articulating those differences to others can help us solidify our understanding of I never even realized that's why I do that with my levels. I never even realized that's why I do that with my sound effects or how I structure my code, why I group these things the way that I did until I see someone else doesn't do it and get to make that case to them. And when you're in an environment where it's known that everyone's there to learn, people are more open to those conversations, to that dialogue, to that occasionally being a two-way realization of, oh, actually, there's some other benefits as well to the other way of doing it. I hadn't seen that that's another approach adding that to my tool self as well, comes from working with people who are around our skill level to learn from these things. Now, there's also another easy tip for using this, right? Is that if you're trying to learn game design, game development, you're at a beginner or immediate level. Again, it might be tempting to just look at the top selling 5, 10 indie games any given time, if not the top AAA games. They aren't making the same kind of errors anymore. You might. You might have valid critiques of what they could have done differently, but what you're not going to see in their programs are the kind of errors that you are still making. What you're going to find for that is if you go browse some game jams, if you go browse some other freeware made by fellow beginner intermediate people, if you go out of your way to find some things that maybe some hidden gems that maybe only dozens or hundreds of people have played, but it was built under similar time constraints, resource constraints, also made by people who, like you, are fitting in maybe a few hours a week, like is the typical practice in the 100 games are released from home team. That's the idea that you're going to learn the most from is largely observing peers who are around your level, looking at their kind of mistakes, seeing your own mistakes in the points of contention there. And again, realizing that there's going to be a two-way back and forth, but how important that is. And this is part of why I'd, you know, before home team, I used to do much more one-on-one -on -one training. Part of why I moved it towards 
the team group approach is because it increases the chances for people to learn from their peers in addition to obviously I can often save them some time by helping foresee some complications that their peers may not see yet. I can help compare and contrast different pathways forward that none of the particular people at their experience level may be familiar with yet. I can show them some faster ways to do things, etc. So there's use on both sides, but as far as sheer number of things we're going to learn throughout our entire life, it's going to be from, regardless of our age, fifth graders reading each other's papers, going to learn things about their own writing in a way they can't reading published novels. High schoolers reading professional journalism will learn more about journalism, partly from reading each other's attempts, or photography or otherwise, looking at each other's attempts, than they will trying to study the work of world-class masters in those fields. There's things to be learned, there's critiques to be had, there's things to discuss, but a lot of the really where it's going to come back to improve their output, their craft, not just as a critic, but as a content creator, as a producer of these things, comes from seeing that there's sort of a mirror of ourselves we're seeing when we're judging the work of others, and it helps for those mirrors to show us the kind of mistakes people at our level very much still make. That's the thought. I will say, by the way, if you want more of these kind of notes, where again, it's exactly this kind of thing where even though it's heavily designed into home team game dev, it's also useful outside of home team game dev, right? You can very much find your way out of, okay, instead of doing a solo project, do it in a team game jam or something. Other ways to try to learn to apply some of this learning, the game dev training list, which is free to sign up for, that is based on learning from the 2,500 hours I've been working with people private training wise in terms of game development stuff, it includes a lot of things like this. So if you want to hear more about those things, more about those approaches, get some of the high level summaries that come up over the years and repeated points we find coming out of our training meetings and so on, check out gamedevtraining.com. Free to sign up for weekly email from me about just some miscellaneous tips for your start. And I also occasionally throw out some free resources on that list. Paid resources, like I think recently shared uh, one of our exercise booklets from Home Team that includes some things about how to break a bigger project into steps. Again, works outside Home Team. And another section there about common troubleshooting strategies for how to get yourself out of a place you're stuck in as you're working on a project. Because you have to train people in, so I've already built those materials. I share some of that stuff for people who are on that list. So, gamedevtraining.com, go there, sign up for it if you haven't yet. And I'll catch you another day. Bye for now.